Hi, Flossy friends. Today is Saturday, April 6, 2024. I am Audrey Marine. This is episode 17 of Floss Two for me. I am approaching one year on YouTube. I can hardly believe it. So at the end of the video, I will talk about future plans as far as my channel goes, and I hope you stick around for that. If not, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you bail after the stitching, that's all right. But I do have a lot of good stitching to show you, so I hope you stick around. If you are a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate all of the new subscribers that I've seen, comments uh, here and on Instagram, so I really appreciate it. If you do want to find me on Instagram, you can search uh, Stitch Stitch Bead, and you should be able to find me that way. So thank you so much. Let's uh, let's get started. I have notes again, yay me. And I am going to start with new starts, actually. I don't know if that's this is the order I've done before. <laughs> I don't know. But today we're starting with new starts. I have two new starts. One is a stitch along, and one was a release for market. Actually, they're both releases for market this year, 2024, but one uh, was a smaller one that I'm particularly excited about. So I'm going to get to that first. This is Home Sweet Home by Shakespeare's Peddler. I'll go ahead and take it out of the plastic. Sorry about the noise. Home Sweet Home. When I saw this on uh, Kitten Stitcher's website, or maybe it was on Instagram. I bet it was on Instagram. I just fell in love with it. I think it is the cutest little thing. The stitch count is only 120 by 120. So on a 40 count, that would be six by six, six by six. It does call for a lot. Let's see. You can, you can use DMC or overdyed cotton. But what I decided to do is to use silks for my stash and just kind of follow the, follow the picture, use that as a guideline and see what I can come up with. So let me show you what I got. I am using 40 count Piccadilly White from Legacy Linens. You can purchase this at hoopandframe.com and from a bunch of other places as well. So this is my start. There is a lot of color changes. If you wanted, you could always use fewer colors, honestly. But I like the look of it, all the different pastels around the house. And then there are also just single individual stitches throughout here, and you can always leave those off if you want. But I wanted to go ahead and stitch every stitch that was charted just in my own color selection. So you can see we've got a couple birds here. This bird doesn't have his, his belly yet. I wasn't sure if I wanted to just go ahead with this bright, bright red. This is Gloriana Crimson. But I love red, and I have a lot of red in my other stitching, so I thought that would be a good way to tie it into other things that will be on the walls, and I like the pop. So let me show you what I'm using. I I have these Glorianas from a kit that I will show you in just a moment, something I've shown before. But then I also have this Crimson, this is Gloriana Crimson. And I purchased this at a little shop in Wisconsin earlier this year. But then these other ones here, these are water lilies actually that my mom had given me. She ordered so much from 123 Stitch that she was like, they just threw in <laughs> some water lilies and some other things. So if you wanna try them, I was like, hell yes I do. <laughs> I was very excited about that. I was able to pull these ones. This is Midnight. This is Moss. And this is Wisteria. I also have Sweet Lavender, but I ultimately, Sweet Lavender from Gloriana, but I ultimately decided to use this Wisteria. I like the variation in it. But these are the other silks that were thrown in, I guess, with mom's order. And she pass them on to me so I'll just show you in case you guys are interested in trying water lilies they feel the same as Gloriana so if you've used Gloriana and you really like those I think you would like water lilies and I think the price is comparable 
This is Pine Forest. This is really pretty. This is Hot Peppers. One of the market releases I got is a, a heart design. And I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember who, uh, the brand, I don't remember who it was, uh, but it was basically all done in one color, but you could tell that it was done with a variegated baby pink. But I thought this would be a really cool one to use for that. So I'm considering that. And this is Mulberry, pinks and purples. And this is Moon Glow. It's funny, mom, it makes me think of those god-awful dishes you got. My mom had these dishes and she just loved them. She ended up giving them away, I don't know why, but anyway, they were called Moon Glow. If you go onto eBay and you search Moon Glow dishes, you'll find them, I'm sure, and maybe it'll be familiar to some of you but I hated them because there was this border around the outside this raised ridge border and anytime you would cut on that border and the border was like two inches thick it was like into the plate and anytime you would cut on that it would just make this god-awful sound so I hated using those plates oh so I I would always tell my mom I was like don't even will those to me I don't want them they're going to goodwill and then ultimately she gave them away but she was so excited about them in fact she found all these extra pieces on eBay at one point to add to her collection so that's what that makes me think of <laughs> uh this is a dinky dyes this is lemon and mint it is like a yellowy green and then um, maybe you saw this one in there. This is a Vic Victorian Rose Gloriana. This is an extra one that I had purchased accidentally uh, with this other kit. Okay. So that's what I have so far on that. I'll show you guys again. So this is almost the entire width. It's going to be about this big. And sorry for these hanging threads because there are so many tiny little bits, individual motifs. Anytime I would get done with the thread, I'd still have almost the entire length of the thread left. So I just kind of wove it into the side here. And there aren't so many colors that I will confuse them. So I'll be able to use those again in the future. Now in the roof here, there's supposed to be like a darker, darker gray for the tiles. And then in between the tiles is a lighter gray. And I'm not sure what color I'm going to use for that lighter gray. And then also for the home, well, for the homes, and then for this bit around here, that's two or three different browns that we have. And I don't have brown options that I like in my overdyed silk collection because basically I showed you every overdyed Gloriana or Water Lily that I have. So I did pick out four or five Gloriana browns and have them sitting in a cart. And I think I'm gonna pull the trigger on those just so I have some options for these. Because looking at it, I did play around with using completely different colors for the Home Sweet Home rather than that brown and lilac color. I thought, well, I could make it, I could make it blues, I could make it greens, whatever. But I do like the brown. And even though I'm not a big lover of purple, I like the overall aesthetic. So I kind of want to stick to the chart at least the not the exact colors obviously but the same sort of color palette oh and I didn't have a good option for this golden yellow color so I need to get something for that I did pick out I think it's called sunflower is what I ultimately decided on so I think I need to order those but I really like that chart I once I have everything I need I don't think it's going to take me very long to finish that and I think I'd like to put it in uh, a darker frame. And I actually have a spot in my house picked out already. In our hallway, we have this collection of uh, like wet erase white boards. And one's a calendar and one's a shopping list and one's something else. And there's this gap in one corner. And I thought, oh, well, a six by six piece, even with a two inch frame, it will fit quite nicely in that little that little opening. I think it'll look good. 
that was one of my new starts. The other new start is also a market release. It is from Cross Stitch Antiques. This is Emmeline Hotchkiss. And if you watch Contented Needleworker Kim or follow her on Instagram or watch Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher, you should have heard about this already. And Grace Paisley Stitcher put out two great videos very recently. The first one was her talking to her friends, Trisha and Karen, and you can find Karen Lynch on Instagram by searching her name. And then Trisha is Prem409 on Instagram. I believe it's 409. And the whole thing was so fun to watch. Those three talking about stitching and things. And I'll, I'll get to that because there are other, th that, those videos were great. But in Grace's most recent video where she just showed her own stitching, it was just her again, she showed that she had purchased this, this chart. So I hope you join in, Grace. But so we, Kim and I are hosting a sale and you can use the hashtag stitching Emmeline or stitching Emmeline, however you choose to say it. And that's it, it's just hashtag stitching Emmeline. Uh, but if you want to purchase this chart, you can go to Cross Stitch Antiques or maybe ask your local LNS if they have it as well. So we started this on April 1st, so just earlier this week. And you can choose on the back, you have a DMC, an NPI, a 103, and a gentle art option. But you can always choose your own colors, of course. I went ahead, there are only eight colors, so you've only got to figure out eight colors if you want to make your own conversion. But I went ahead and chose the 103s. And these are the colors. <laughs> so bright and beautiful. Looking at the cover, you can see she's old and she's weathered and she's dulled a bit, but these are the colors. And I'm especially excited for this one right here because this is 107, it's a really, really bright, deep, hot pink, actually. And this features in Hannah Campbell. So I think Emily and Hannah will look just beautiful hanging together. Let me go, go ahead and show you my start. I chose, let me check my notes to make sure I got this right. I think I chose, well, I say I chose, but actually Morris chose this fabric. I gave him some options and he picked out. Where did I put it? You know what? I didn't even write what I, what I, what I chose. What did I choose? I know this is a 46 count. Oh, this is cereal starter. <laughs> it's a cereal starter. That's the back. <laughs> you don't want to see that. Okay. Look at that hot pink. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not in love with this orange color, but I think overall as a whole, it looks great. The whole, everything looks good together. I mean, look at this lemon tree. Isn't that pretty? And there's gonna be a little flower basket here. And then there are a couple animals, more flowers, and there's a big house at the bottom. This is a... Uh, so this is Serial Starter, 46 count Serial Starter from Number 12 Stitch Co. And it's got a little bit of modeling in it. I'm not sure you're able to actually see it here, but it is sort of a pinkish brown fabric. And I gave, I, I, Morris was in here with me and I said, you know, I, I'm gonna start this pretty soon and I need to select a fabric. And I had decided on whatever, but then wasn't in love with it. And so I laid a few things out and very quickly Morris was like, well, that one's too dark and I don't like that one. And that one is too, whatever he said. And then so he ultimately he decided on this one and I think it's a great choice. So good job, Morris. Yeah, I really like this one. So if you have already started it, which would be amazing because it just came out of market, uh, or you're thinking about it, you've got the chart, or you've been on the fence, maybe this will help you decide. If you want to join in, you can tag me and Kim 
and use the hashtag Stitching Emmeline so we can see your progress. But she's been, she's been fun. I liked how that hot pink pops on the fabric. Okay. Oh, so let me go back and talk about Grace's videos real quick since I, since I mentioned them. Grace put out, she's going to do a new series of videos called Floss Tuber for a Day. And what she's doing is she's having conversations with people who don't have their own floss tube channels, but are stitchers and whether or not they have a big presence on Instagram or wherever else, you know, she'll interview them, talk. To, so she was asking Trisha and Karen, you know, how did they get started? And what's their favorite and what don't they like? And what's their oldest whip? <laughs> I didn't feel bad about some things. <laughs> you know, there are a couple things that I've abandoned. But then Grace on her next video, she showed a, she showed her whip. That is 40 years old. And she's like, I don't think I'm going to get back to it. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. But it's interesting that she held on to it. Hang on to it, Grace. Just keep it. Just, it's a reminder of days past, right? But, um... <laughs> Trisha was so funny, so funny. And Karen had me laughing as well, especially when she said, she was talking about Carol, I don't even know her last name, Carol Saltbox Stitcher. And it's funny, she was talking about Carol Saltbox and she's like, that's her last name, it's Saltbox. <laughs> that's what we call her. And I laughed so hard, I was like, yes, that's exactly right. I don't know her last name. But she had some pieces, some framed samplers hanging in the corner. And the second time I had this video on, Morris had actually sat down to just sit with me, I guess. I don't know. But he was he was looking at the samplers that she had on her wall. And he's like, oh, Mom, you did that one. And I was like, which one, buddy? Because I, I hadn't done any of them. I have charts for a couple of them, but I hadn't done any of them. And he said, well, the one in the corner with the big house, which is Elizabeth Furnace. And I said, no, I didn't do that one, but I did. I stitched Harriet Hay, which also has a big house and it's got trees and a fancy border and stuff like that. So I can, it has a lot of similarities. You're right. But then I'm sitting there and I'm looking at Elizabeth Furnace going, I need that. I want that. <laughs> so Elizabeth Furnace might be happening at some point. It's, it's huge. It's so pretty. I love that house and the big roses in the corner up top. I, I really like that. So Karen, I'm blaming you for that. Uh, just seeing it kind of fuzzy in the distance in the corner on your wall. That was, that was enough for me to go, oh yeah. Oh, and then that one has damn grass and animals, but the grass is color blocked. So it's all these different greens, not blended together, but just in blocks and I think it looks really interesting but if you haven't already watched Grace's last two videos I would heartily recommend them and then I was also I've also been going through and watching some of Kim's older videos just to like have on yesterday I I did a lot of cleaning I texted Ryan because of course he's out of town I texted Ryan and I said, I did a lot today. I got hardly any stitching done. That should tell you how much I got done in the house. And he's like, oh. <laughs> but it's nice to have floss tube on in the background while I'm doing things around the house because now it gets to a point where I don't need to see anything. If they mention a chart that I know, I can see it in my head. And if they mention a chart that I don't know, then I pop back to the TV and I'm like, oh, what's that? Oh, no, I don't like it. And then I continue on or, ooh, I need that. <laughs> but Kim mentioned something from a video a year ago about a sal that she was doing, hashtag stitch up hair in April, S-A-L. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna bring that back. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> we're doing that. Did you stitch a pair last year? I don't know, because I haven't gotten through that video. But but I have the Annie B's red work pairs and I've been looking at them. I just can't decide what thread and what fabric to use. So I just need to sit down and make a decision because I don't think it would take me very long to stitch one of those if once I finally commit. But I did like that idea and I was like, oh, it's April. Uh, okay, so I showed you those two new starts. So we'll get into whips. And since we were talking about the Sal with Kim, Oh, I'm going to mention another Sal 
that I have going on. Started this at the beginning of the year. This is Marie Louise Pire, and the hashtag is hashtag Marie Louise Pire, S A L, all one word. And the idea was to stitch one row per month and a little bit of order. So that's what I've been doing. So I finished January, February, and March. I have not started April yet, but it's only the 6th, so I have time. Ryan and I are leaving on a trip again on the 18th, I believe it is. So I think in the next, what is it, week and a half or so that I have before we leave, oh, almost two weeks, I am going to work on the April row of Marie Louise here. This is 46 count gold sand from X2 Design. It's got a little bit of a golden modeling in it. And I chose that because of the thread colors here. We have two golds and I thought that would complement it very nicely. Sometimes you don't want to, you know, you don't want there to be too much sameness. But I had this fabric, I think I purchased it at the Sweater Weather Retreat back in October. I just fell in love with the color. I also fell in love with gray sand, I think it is, from x which is gray. It is like gray gray, darker gray with gold modeling in it. I just loved it. And I still think about it sometimes, but I don't know what I would put on it. I haven't found anything to put on it. I, there are quite a few hat samplers that call for tabby, tabby cat wood smoke. I have not seen wood smoke in person, but I wonder if wood smoke is a darker gray and those samplers having been worked on that darker gray, if they would also work on gray sand by x I don't know. But so you can see I finished January, February, and March. And this, this border or this decorative band here does extend all the way. I thought, oh, well, you know, I really should finish that because it's between February and March. But then I thought, you know, I finished my March row of letters and I did some more border. I got almost done with this band. I'm going to call it good because I remember it was pretty late into last month that I got to this point and I thought, you know what, I've, I've maxed out on Marie Louise. So I'm going to put her away until next month and now it's next month. So I need to get back to her. But I've got for this month, I've got more of these golden letters to do with the red decorative organic leaf like bits. I do really like stitching these letters. And then next month, I've just got a few of them. And then we get into really boring rows. <laughs> um, yeah, and then more monochromatic stuff. So I think individually, one row might not be the most exciting thing. But overall, as a whole, I think it's going to be just gorgeous. And I'll have her done in December. And again, here are the colors. Because, well, these are the 103s. You can also, there's on the back of the chart, as always, there is um, an Overa Swa option and a DMC option. You can always pick your own colors. Oh, that's what I meant to mention. You guys need to look up the cute olive on Instagram, the underscore cute underscore olive. She has joined in with this sal, but she's picked completely different colors. She's picked completely different colors. So she's got, Vashti did like light baby pastel colors for the border. And then she chose, what is it that she chose? Like a darker green or a really dark blue or something for this first row of letters. She said she's not sure if he, she likes it. She's got a few of these done and a few of these done. She, she says she's possibly considering restitching those letters. Um, but I don't know. I like it so far, but it's very different than what's called for. So you should go ahead and take a look. And then just, you know, do pick your own colors. If, if the called for, if the chart is something that you really love, 
but the colors aren't your jam. How did I have this folded? Then, you know, pick some, some other combination that works for you. There we go. Okay. Oh, and speaking of Vashti, you should also, not like, not like you should definitely do this, but if you're interested, The Attic put out another video within the last week or so. And what they did was Carolyn went around and, I think it was Carolyn who did it, it must have been her, asked the ladies who work there, well, what have you chosen for market? What are you working on? And they showed everything they're, that they're working on and it was really interesting. And then also you get to see like the attic shop in the background. I'm like, oh, I wanna go back. <laughs> I want to go back. I really do want to go back to the attic. I want to go back to Sampler Symposium. I went this January and it was wonderful. And I want to go to Sampler Symposium again next year. However, I am going to the Hobby House Retreat in October, this October. The great, Sam the great British Sampler Weekend Comes to America. I'm already in that, signed up for it, going to that. And I'm very excited, but Nicola of Hands Across the Sea Samplers announced and opened up registration for the Great British Sampler Weekend in Swindon, England in October of 2025. And she had t mentioned this weeks or even months ago or something. And I remember after I watched the video in which she mentions that, I went out and I said, Ryan, do you want to go to England for my birthday in 2025? And he was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and we didn't even really talk about it at all. It was just like, please take me. And uh, so when she, she, when she finally opened up registration for this, I was like, oh man, I got to talk to her. I actually have to like have a conversation with Ryan about this. And she mentioned in the video that the previous retreat had sold out very quickly and it'll likely sell out again very quickly within hours. So I thought to myself, well, I can register and get in because the registration was open as I was like thinking this and watching this video and everything. I thought I can, I can register and then have the conversation with Ryan, but there's a cancellation fee and it wasn't just like 20 pounds. I think it's like a hundred pounds or something. So I was like, I don't know if I can risk the cancellation. So I'll just wait and I'll talk to Ryan. He and I were not together that day. That's another thing. It was like, he's out of town or I'm out of town or we're both out of town or. <laughs> so, uh, so I decided to wait a day until I could see him in person. And sure enough, it had all filled up. But Nicola said, well, it's, it's full, but you can send me an email at this particular email address and get in on the cancellation list. And it's 18 months from now, right? It's, it's really far away. So I did, I sat down with Ryan and I told him, I said, you know, there's, I don't know if you really understood that I was serious because I was kind of goofing around when I mentioned it before. I said, but there's this event that I want to go to in England next October of 2025. And and I didn't even get to finish. He was just like, we'll make it happen. I was like, okay, <laughs> time out here. I said, well, that's great. Uh, and registration opened yesterday. And he's like, yay. And I was like, but it's already full. He's like, oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. Cause now that I know that we're good, I will send an email and get on the cancellation list. All this to say, I'm on the cancellation list for Swindon of October of 2025. And I'm really hoping that I hear that there's a spot for me before registration for Sampler Symposium opens up. Because I don't know if I can swing Sampler Symposium and a trip to England for stitching in one calendar year. Uh, so I'd hate to like sign up for Sampler Symposium and then get an email from Nicola like, oh, there's an opening for you. <laughs> like, well, I guess I'm spending, I don't know, the equivalent of a Kia Sophia <laughs> on retreats. Oh my gosh. Anyway. And I, th you know, I was doing all this work in the house last night to reorganize things. Not last night, yesterday, like the whole day, reorganizing some things. 
And I'm still so irritated that we don't have any like nice furniture. We have crappy Ikea furniture that I brought into the marriage from a previous marriage and looks like crappy college furniture. And I mean, there's a lot of that. Like you walk in our house and it's like, what is happening here? What is happening here? But we spent all our money on travel. We spent all our money on travel. And last time Ryan and I were at Disney World, he was like, you know, we can rebook and get a discount for our next trip. And I was like, I want a new couch. <laughs> but then on the other hand, it's like, I want to go to different places and I want to do all these things. We have a trip coming up. I'm leaving on the 18th with him. We're going to California. And then from California, we're going to France. And then from France, just for the weekend, we're popping over to Monaco because he has to work there for something. Going back to France and finally coming home. <laughs> and I was talking to the kids about this. And I'm like, oh my God, it's going to be so much moving around. And that's what I hate about travel. I don't like to spend a day here and then pack up all my crap and spend a day there and keep doing that. I want to go somewhere and be there for like five days. So I was talking to them. And I was like, I don't know. Why did I agree to this? Also, how much money is this costing us? But you know, can't take it with you when you're dead. Right? That was quite a tangent. So sorry for that. Let's get into more stitching. More stitching. Okay, I showed you Marie Louise. Now, Marie Louise, as I mentioned, is a year-long stitch that I'm working on. And it's great because I've it, it works for me. Just doing a little bit each month and then getting to say that I'm done with it for that month has been wonderful. And similarly, I have this chart. I'll take it out of the plastic. I should do that before I start the video. This is a reflet de soie. This is called Des Fleurs Toute L'Année. I purchased this from 123 Stitch, so you should be able to find it from them if you want. And uh, I, I would think anybody else who carries Reflet de Swash should be able to find this for you. But this has 12 bouquets, as you can see, so I decided to stitch one per month. And there, there you see it says Janvier, Février, Mars. It is January, February, March there is a poem throughout here and I haven't, I don't like the placement of the words. So I have not stitched the words yet, but I will. I just haven't decided on how to arrange them. And I have completed through March and I started on April. So here is January. These are Gloriana. This is on 46 count silica from number 12 stitch co and I think for Gloriana maybe more most people would use a 36 or a 40 or something but on the 46 the stitches are really nice and puffy and it's you get really great coverage it's completely full but the Gloriana silks are so soft they're kind of spongy that it's not it's not difficult to get your needle through, and I use a 28 for everything. I use a 28 even on 56 count, and I know people are like, oh, you should use a smaller needle. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. So this is January, February, and March, and then I started April. The Gloriana silks are highly variegated, especially Flowers of Italy, that's what this one is. This green, yellow, red, that's all the same length of thread. Uh, but like this pink, you can hardly see any vari variegation. But I think I'm most looking forward to August on this one. August is my favorite basket. Anyway, uh, this fabric is has kind of a browner tone. In the photo, I think this is a gray fabric. It looks kind of purplish in in the photo. And when before I started this, I had considered using a pink fabric even. I think I was considering Ice Rose from number 12, but ultimately I thought that was going to be way too much pink. And I'm glad I went with the silica because it's, well, it's like sand, like silica. 
And I didn't iron anything today. You know why? Because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I already went to the gym and I didn't feel like doing that. So I wasn't going to iron. I went to the gym a few days ago. No, yeah, Wednesday. I went on Wednesday. And it was my first time for a while. And I pushed myself pretty hard. And even this morning, I had already committed to this 930 class, but I woke up this morning. It was like, oh, it hurts to walk. That was hard with class from two days ago. But I went today and I'm glad that I went because I won't be going tomorrow and I won't be going, probably won't be going on, on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to Chicago to visit some friends uh, for their son's first birthday. If you guys watch, these are the Gloriana for this chart that I just showed. That's why. <laughs> uh, if you guys watched my first video, you might remember the baby sampler that I made for Luca Benjamin. He is one. He's one. This is the miracle baby that took 10 rounds of IVF and he's perfect. It's amazing. He's perfect. But he looks exactly like the mom's brother. Like he looks like Trevor and I've met Trevor and I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> he doesn't look like John. It's funny. It's like, well, my kids don't look like me. Well, Morris looks like me, but R Rupert looks adopted. R both Rupert and Morris are half Japanese. And <laughs> Rupert looks 100% Japanese. Morris looks, is he white? That's what he looks like. <laughs> And I remember I was grocery shopping when Rupert was like, I don't know, a baby. And I had this older couple come up to me. I'm like, oh, he's so cute. What country did you get him from? I made him. <laughs> so this is my PSA. Don't ask someone what country they got their baby from. Don't ask someone when they're having kids because they might be having fertility issues or just not want kids. And it could be a really sore subject. And as was the case with our friends, John and Alex, and their now one-year-old baby. I cannot believe he's one now. So I'm so excited. I haven't seen him in, oh, too many months. <laughs> Alex posted a picture and uh, she was like, I'm sorry, who is this teenager? <laughs> because he looks already not like a baby. <laughs> But I'm excited to see them tomorrow. And uh, and then, you know, I'm not going to want to go to the gym before I drive to Chicago. That's not going to happen. Okay, what else do I have? I have another, it's it's not like it was like planned to be a long-term project. It's just such a big chart. And this was something I decided was going to be an hour a day. This is Carmel Atso Party by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. One color, everything is over two, so you can stitch it on eight up, but it is big, I will tell you that, because I'm stitching it on 56 count, and it's big. So on like a 14 count Ada, or a 28 count linen, it would be 22 and change by almost 19 inches. But she is beautiful, she's beautiful. I am using the Soie Surfine which is this spool I was playing with a minute ago. Swan Surfine in my favorite color. 664 is the 103. The Swan Surfine is 2664. These are 100 meter spools. I've already used up one spool and I will not need a third spool, but I'm just saying if you're gonna use, if you're gonna use the 103s, you'll probably need at least three spools because the 103 spools are only 50 meters and this is 100 meters and I've already blown through more than 100 meters. And I'm stitching this, as I said, on 56 count. This is Old Mushroom by X2. I started this on Christmas Eve and since then I have put in the equivalent of an hour a day almost every day. So there were some days that I missed and so then I would stitch extra hours on other days but I still have not completely caught up and I decided that that's okay. I'm okay with it. 
it doesn't, but I am still keeping track of how many hours I'm putting into it just out of curiosity since I've, you know, kept track this long. She has some oddities in the chart, like that right there, but I like it. I really like this alphabet here. Oh, this band. I could do without this band. I love how it looks, but it is. That's a pain. This basket, I had some problems with the basket, but it was my own, my own error. Once I started, once I knew where I was, it was fine. I had mentioned last time that I was considering writing Faith Par Audrey Marine on here, but I ultimately decided not to because I thought, well, instead of, instead of putting Carmel's initials CA in here as it is charted, I could put my own signature, but then I thought, I don't want to do that either. I'm just going to stitch it as she has it at stitch. And then up here, I'm going to put my own signature. And I think on this one, I am going to stitch it in red in the Swastrophene. I'm not going to stitch it in a color to match the fabric. I think it's okay. I think there are enough, you know, there are these little motifs, a couple little animals. I think once I put my own signature up there, it's fine. I meant to tell you guys that I don't have any finishes to show you. I have finished something since I saw you last. I finished Ann Ogston, and I should have pulled that chart. I finished Ann Ogston, which was a chart that I got from Sampler Symposium earlier this year. And Ann had finished her sampler on March 18th, and I finished it on March 18th, and I'm so pleased. But I can't show it to you because I already sent it to the framer. And I sent four other pieces with her to the framer. And I sent five smalls to be finished. Uh, uh, yay me! <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. Yeah. And I have a ton of fabric left here. So I've got an, I mean, I've got an entire half left to stitch something else or a couple somethings. This one I am gonna take with me on our trip. I'm gonna take this and one other thing I will show you. And I think in that way, I'll be able to finish it either on the trip or shortly after we get back. Okay. Then the other, another whip I have. Yeah, and I picked this up and realized I left a hoop in it. Oops. Because yesterday morning I woke up at stupid o'clock for no reason. And you know, I lay in bed for an hour. I was like, well, might as well get up. So I got up and I stitched a bit in the morning. <laughs> and then I put this down and I was like, oh, well, I'll get back to it soonish. So I don't need to take the hoop out. And then I got that bug to just, you know, clean and reorganize and go through crap and empty the game closet and like getting rid of a bunch of stuff we haven't touched in ages. And, and uh, I, I'm very happy with what I managed to do yesterday, but I really didn't get that much stitching done and forgot that I left this hoop in it. Okay, after, I think it was my last episode, maybe it was the one before, I got more questions about this hoop than anything else. I got so many questions here on YouTube and on Instagram, people asked about it. This is a six inch by three and a half inch hoop. I bought it from Hoop and Frame. It is an Access Commodities Hardwick Manor hoop. I don't even have twill tape around it. I just use it as is. It retails for 52, I think, and that sounds steep, but I love it and I use it all the time. And it doesn't weigh anything. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fatigue my wrist, which is why I bought this stand because I was having a lot of pain in my wrist holding a larger hoop and lots of fabric and stuff. But this is, an, and it's a nice little travel size as well, the six by three and a half. Let me show you the chart. This is by Shakespeare's Peddler. This is M. Satterthwaite. You can get this on Kitten Stitcher's website or from different sellers on Etsy, from your LNS, whatever. It is almost monochromatic, but you may notice there is some cream here and some cream there. So, this calls for, I think, an overdyed cotton or DMC. 
but I thought, well, I can convert black and cream to 103. So I chose noir and creme, which mean black and cream <laughs> for 103s. And I am using, I am using 46 count brown paper by x -Jew. It is kind of a grayish brown in person, but I think the, I think the black pops nicely. Yeah. So I finished this whole motif. I don't know if I had the last time I talked to you guys, uh, but I started this and I don't know what it is. Stupid kid. But Mar Marlo is at the door. No place is safe in this house. But as I, as I mentioned last time, I'm, I was struggling with modifying antique reproduction samplers, even just enough to put my own signature or name on it, but I'm becoming more comfortable with that. In fact, the five things that I sent off to the framer, Ann Oxton has an almost invisible signature on it. I used a color very similar to the fabric color, but then three of the other pieces were red samplers and I used red thread. I went ahead and used red thread. And then, what was the other one? Oh, Harriet Hay. Harriet Hay, I put my signature on it as well in a thread that pretty well matched the fabric, so it's hard to see. But this one, you know, it has an MA up here. And I thought, well, that would be easy enough to flip around and make an AM. So that's what I did, but also it was off center and there were two extra spaces that I could fit this other style of A in it. So not only did I switch the M and A around, but I used this style of A and it fits perfectly. And also looking at this, so M Satterthwaite put her name on it and then she put MS to MA 1807. And then she's got all these letters scattered around. And that I think is typical of Quaker style samplers, but it's not a complete alphabet that I can tell. No. So I thought, well, maybe the letters stood or for or represented certain people. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do that too. Maybe I'll just put in letters of significant people in my family. Not like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> anyway, so if you guys are looking for a black sampler, I like that one. There is, what is, what is the one? Grimshaw, Grimshaw, beautiful black sampler, has a lot of those medallions on it as well, but has alphabets or a huge verse or something. That was one that I was considering. Then ultimately I found this one on Super Sale and I thought, well, it has, Fewer letters and a lot cheaper. And it's square. I like the I like the square size. <sighs> and you know those uh, some charts come in those sleeves that we love to hate, right? That's they have that sticky bit on. These ones that Hobby House sends their charts in and are open on the top. I use this and just, oh, it's so easy to, so easy to use and I don't have to deal with that sticky stuff. All right, my next whip that I have to show you is another Reflata Swap. I got this kit at the attic. I say kit, it did not come with fabric, but it came with all the beads and it even came with a beading needle with the chart. This is Le Temps des Roses. By Reflet de Soie. And I really think it looks upside down. <laughs> I am not beating this outside border. I think it's fine, but I don't think it's necessary. And the piece of fabric that I had just fits this inside bit, as you'll see. Because you'll see where my hoop, where my hoop sits. See, see the hoop just fits on it. And you can't hoop over areas that are already beaded. So the hoop has to actually be bigger than the complete beaded area. So last time I showed this to you, I had about that done. 
And then over the last couple days, I stitched this additional leaf. This is slow going. It's slow going because you're supposed to stitch it on a 32 count. What are you supposed to stitch it on? I don't remember. Something, a, a lower thread count than what I chose. I chose 37 count Wild Honey by Legacy. This is a piece of fabric that I had in a kit that I bought from Katie Strachan. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but I've just sort of like decided to use the materials for something else. I, I think I I got so excited about it. I was like, oh yeah, I want to use Katie's Katie's conversion and I got to buy Katie's kit. And it was great, but I wasn't as gung-ho about that chart as I was about other charts. I was just excited for the kit from Katie Strachan. So what I am really excited uh, to get is Katie's kit for her Brita Mart sampler. Please go watch her videos and just just get to the section about the Brita Mart sampler, if nothing else. She's designing her own sampler, her own band sampler, and it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I saw the bit that she had done in January. I saw that in person and it was stunning. And she's made a lot of progress since then. So I'm very excited to get that kit when she's finished it and has that ready to go. Uh, but I got this at the attic when I was there in January. I started it shortly after I got home and, you know, did these two flowers and these leaves and was really excited about it and then just stalled out on it. And that was okay. I got excited about other things. But I thought, I really want to get back to this. I want to finish it within the next few months and then have it finished in two. I'm thinking a pillow finish, but with a little lacy ribbon or something on it so I can hang it on a door. I don't I don't want to use it as a pin cushion. It's going to have so much beading on it. I don't want it to be I just want it to be like displayed somewhere and left alone really. But, but yeah, it came with all the beads you need and the chart. And I'm sorry, I got the last one. Somebody actually messaged me after I showed it on that video. And they're like, oh, I called the attic. I was so excited. They didn't have it. Did you get the last one? I think I did. But maybe you can find it elsewhere. And if this one looks like too much for you, too much beading, but you want to try something small, you can try the Mill Hill kits on perforated paper. But Reflated Swa also has some other smaller beaded kits they just make these little round finishes and there's one that's called hope and one that's called joy and I think the third one is peace. I saw them on one, two, three stitch. So presumably you can get them there. This was recently I thought I saw them and put them in my wish list. Uh, but perhaps you can get them other places as well. So if you're interested in beading on linen, then I would look there. Okay. This is my last whip that I have to show you. And Hannah Campbell. <laughs> Here's a reminder what she looks like. So much over one. Ooh, let me show you her colors. Look, I killed another spool. RIP 523. Oh, so here is 107. This is the same color that's in Emmeline Hotchkiss. Yeah, very pretty. I did make significant progress on Hannah. I'm, I, I don't think I can say I'm almost done, but I'm almost done. <laughs> pretty darn close. Pretty darn close to being able to say I'm almost done. All right. Ooh. I was following along with Rose Hex progress. She is the one leading the stitch along for, for Hannah. They started in June of last year, I think it was. And I saw like a month or two ago where she was and I was like, oh, that's about where I am. And so I've been following her progress since then. And, and within just the last week or two, I thought, oh, I'm gonna join that Facebook group the Hannah Campbell stitch along and I'm glad I did then I can some people have already finished theirs good job because she has been 
uh, but some people are, you know, just keeping up with, with the sal and they split it up into, I think, yeah, 15 parts. So I think they're set to finish in August, which is actually when Hannah finished hers, but I don't think I'm going to need it until August. I think I can finish it sooner. So I finished since, since I showed you guys last, I finished this alphabet from the S on. I finished these eyelets from the S off, from that same spot on. I stitched all these words. I finished this basket. I stitched these ways and I stitched the house. I know it's not done, but I stitched the house and I started on this basket. That's how much I got done. Yeah. I, now the, the words are over one and that was slow going. So I'd stitch a word or two and then I'd do something else and go back and forth that way. And then the eyelets, I want to mention Hannah's, Hannah's eyelets did not go all the way to the edge. There's just one in no man's land there hanging out. And I thought, I wonder if Hannah reached the end of her threads and couldn't quite get those last few in the proper colors. So she just said, screw it. I'm not going to bother or who knows what happened. Who knows? So I, I thought, you know, as I was getting closer and closer to the end of this row of diamonds made of eyelets, I was thinking about it and I thought, ultimately I want it to be even. So I made the last half diamond look like the first half diamond. And then there is a change that I made, a conscious change I made up here in the board, in this section of border. And then I do have a mistake, a couple mistakes in this diamond here. So it is unique to me. It's not perfect, but hey, it's, it's getting done. And, oh, what was I gonna mention? Oh, that's what I was gonna talk about. Now the house on the original sampler, well, first of all, the original sampler is larger than what mine is going to be. I'm stitching on 45 count Thai iced tea by Legacy Linens. You can get that from Poop and Frame or your LNS. Um, but Hannah's original was much larger. And she actually used beads for the windows here in the house. And Nicola talks in the book and on her video when discussing this, she talked about the trouble that they had sourcing beads that would fit on 45 count. Now, presumably you could use larger beads, just fewer of them than you would stitches. But they ultimately decided to call for this accentuate it is a metallic synthetic thread this is accentuate mma color 033 and it's supposed to give you that same shimmering effect that hannah's beads did my hold up because i did want to i did want to finish the house and fill in those windows because there's there are these black windows or doors here but then all these other openings are to be filled in with accentuate and I thought, well, do I want to use the metallic thread? I'm not sure that I'm going to like how it looks. Do I really want metallic thread on this sampler? Should I just use a blue to fill in the windows? I don't know. And I was, I was thinking about how I've never seen, I've never seen metallic thread used on any other reproduction sampler. So why would I use it on this? But then I was thinking about the conscious changes that I made already. And the fact that this isn't a perfect reproduction. You know, it's not. I think she stitched it on canvas or something. So I don't know. Ultimately, I just need to make my own decision. I'll let you guys know what I decide. But I'm happy with the progress that I've made. I'm happy that finally I can show you guys that something has changed on Hannah. <laughs> and it's not like here she is again, completely unchanged. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm at the one hour mark. Okay. Let's wrap this up here. Okay. 
Oh, haul. Um, I haven't bought too much. I bought, I mentioned last time that I bought some thread from Thread Nuts, over dyed 103s. I do have them, but I'm not gonna pull them out. I'll show them to you at a later date. They're really pretty though. And when you go onto threadnuts.com and you see the cost of the 103s, just know that a single spool of 103 from your LNS is gonna cost anywhere from 380 to 430. Cause on 123 Stitch, they bumped them up 50 cents. So from the shop, whatever shop you've been purchasing these from, they're gonna be about four bucks. And it is 50 meters of thread. Now the thread nuts spools are $18 a piece, but you get 150 meters. So actually it works out to be not as much of a jump from the single color to the over dyed 103s as it is a jump from the cost of a single color DMC to an over dyed Weeks, Gentle Art, Classic Color Works, whatever it may be. Cause you know, you figure a skein of those is more than triple the price of a DMC. So when you go out to thread nuts, you're gonna go, oh, that's expensive, but you get a lot of thread. So I have not, have not decided what I'm gonna use any of the thread nuts for yet, but I feel confident that whatever I start, because I was thinking about that new, the Lone Eagle sampler from Needlework Press that is monochromatic, just red. I was thinking about using a spool of the thread nuts over dyed 103 for that maybe. And I thought, well, with 150 meters, I will have plenty. So if you're interested, these are the over dyed 103 spools that Nicola mentioned Nicola Parkman mentioned on one of her most recent videos. Other than that, I've got some things for mom. She bought me, because yes, I'm 35 and I still get an Easter basket. She bought me some fabric. This is 45 count foxtail millet. You can see it's from Hoop and Frame. This is a nice cream color. And then this is 5363 Gothic Ivory a lighter color so I'm not sure what I'm going to use I mean this would be easy to use for anything this 5363 because it's an uneven weave you've got 53 threads one way and 63 threads the other way your X's are not going to be completely square so you'll end up with like a slightly distor distorted image so it's something I need to consider when I choose what to use that for. Uh, but the other thing was mom got me a crap ton of 103s. So thanks mom. She even got me more of these bins and labeled them. Look. <laughs> so I have not every color, but almost every color. So thank you very much mom. She also got me a, a t-shirt from Stitch Folk. And I'm sure you've seen plenty of people wearing these. Stitchfolk.com. Barry has a bunch of different designs. And she got me, mom got me a medium and it fit pretty well over my bingo wings. Uh, so if you're five, five and average-ish like this, I would go for a medium. Uh, but she's got t-shirts and sweatshirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, whatever. So check that out. Other than that, I think, I think that's every, th oh wait, I, last thing I had to show you was the other kit that I'm gonna take on my trip here. This is Noelle Corbineau, 1847. This is another Reflé de Soie. This was another gift from mom. She bought this for me earlier this year and got me the silks. This is stitched on, I mean, the original looks like it's on what was a white or cream fabric that has since discolored. You can see, especially around this, the flowers, it looks discolored. And these, these are the silks. So pretty, right? Yeah. Now I selected a dark fabric. This is Autumn Beach. This is 40 count Autumn Beach from number 12. 
And I know you're thinking, well, what about that vase, that gold vase? How is that gonna work? But actually, the gold vase has big swaths of color here. The blue will pop on this fabric, but it's not just like one gold stitch that I think would get lost on this fabric. The areas of gold stitching are pretty significant. And I think that this shows up well. It's a different, it's a different tone. But I think the flowers, the greens, and the blue of the vase is going to pop very nicely on this fabric. This is a very warm. Yeah. So I'm gonna take that with me on our trip as well as Carmel and maybe maybe some other small, like maybe one of the pairs from Annie B's. Maybe I'll do that. Finally, finally make a decision on that. So I think I think that now is everything that I have to show you. I just wanted to add that my my floss tube anniversary is coming up next month. It is May 13th. I can't believe it. And I have been thinking about what sort of schedule I want to keep. And I got a lot of really kind messages from everybody. A few people said shorter videos more often, but it seemed like the majority of people kind of felt how I feel, which is like, I want longer videos, even if it means I get them less frequently. And ultimately that is what's best for me and my schedule as well. Another thing I realized is that I don't like feeling like I have to record on one particular day of the week because a couple days ago I felt really ready to record a floss tube and I was like but it's not Saturday and if I wait a few more days then I'll get a little bit more stitching in and I'll have more to show but when I was in the mood I should have just recorded I mean this this has been fine today and I've got good lighting and I've had I've got the time to do it so it works out well but I don't work during the week so I have those days available to me and there are often weekends that I am busy and cannot record. So I think I am going to move to a once a month schedule and it's going to be some random day during the month. Uh, it, it's not going to be a particular day of the week and it's not going to be a particular date within the month, but I'll probably aim to do it around the middle of the month but if you're a subscriber you'll just one day see oh i've just got a new video and uh and and that's it'll just it'll just show up when it shows up and i think that's gonna work best for me um other than that i don't think i have anything else so you guys should hear from me again sometime within the next four to five weeks as i say it's going to be next month that i come back to you after my trip to California and Europe and I should have probably not a ton of stitching to share with you but but maybe maybe I'll get a lot done before we actually leave and uh, but I don't expect to have a lot of haul or anything but one thing I thought was that maybe I'd give you guys like I'd record a little tour of my very naked but my floss palace here <laughs> Oh, and people seem to love that term. <laughs> Ryan got a kick. I was like, the ladies love your term, floss palettes. <laughs> but I have, you know, I've done some some organizing, and maybe you guys are curious to see how I organize things. I don't. It's not going to be like the magnificent home tour that you got from Brenda. <laughs> it's not going to be that. It's going to be my one sad room. Uh, but maybe you're curious to see how I store linen or charts or whatever. So uh, that's one thing that I'm thinking about doing for next time. Again, if you want to find me on Instagram, you can find me at Stitch Stitch Bead. Please go ahead and leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns, whatever it may be here on FlossTube. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Happy stitching!